Dearly beloved, we are gathered here today to celebrate the life of Essendon's 2023 season. 2023 was to be a year of change. After the Barham Revolution of August 2022, things were going to be different. The dulcet tones of Brad soothed our battered eardrums as learnings became lessons and twaddle became truth. It's a development year. We're a long way off and we're not there yet. It has been said time and time again this year. But the seductive allure of finals looked tangible and we took a bite of the apple and hoped that it would not be poisoned. Sadly, the slide occurred and reality set in and we dreamed it would not be true. Whilst mathematically finals remain possible, the likelihood re- would require a resurrection of biblical nature to occur. On field, the skipper has led by example. The former turned around a waning year and the time we have put into young talent will surely bring us dividends in the future. As the flowers of spring approach, we will be left watching the other kids play on the grass while we remain inside and watch through the window. Whilst 2023 may be dead, soon 2024 will live and bring new hopes, new desires and new delusions. This is the word of Paco. Praise Praise be to Paco. Paco. Praise be to Paco. Uh, And this is, of course, the Sash podcast. Uh, And it is that time of year when we put on our black suits, mourn the loss of another footy season. Um, And while we will be very, very dark, of course, there will be some positives that we may wade through along the way. Um, Joining me for this somber occasion is Jesse. Hello, mate. G'day. And uh, I am the only shining light at the moment (laughs) if you're watching uh, on the YouTube, and if not, I'm the only one wearing a, a light colored suit because it will be dark mm. and there will need to be some light. And as said to yourself, I didn't think that it was fair and just for us to do a funeral pod if we are uh, mathematically still within it. I do think it is the right thing to do, but I have to be that one person that does bring some hope to our season, albeit I uh, I have written a eulogy, so yeah. I'm uh, one foot in, one foot out at the moment. Um, and it's good to welcome Joel, who's looking a bit reservoir don at the moment. It's <laughs> <laughs> He's pointing away. Move on. Move on, move on. Um, and it is good to welcome um, the Prince of Darkness himself, Murders, with us. Hello. <laughs> mm. Okay, mate. The Prince of going. Ligon Street. Yeah, that's yeah, it. It's, it's good. The, the dark king, prince. mate. I'm the king. The it's dark good. prince. It's good to see you on a Monday. It's been a little while. On the Monday, people yeah, who don't listen to Thursday wouldn't have heard you for some time. Yeah, but that's mm. how you pulled your finger out. Yeah, we wouldn't have missed too much, I don't reckon. But um, yeah, it's uh, it's good, be, good to be back in the seat, Rob. Uh, unfortunate circumstances that bring me here. But mm. yeah, it is the... Uh, Here's the last four weeks or so that have been that have um, that have done it, isn't it? Yes, yes, mm. yes. It has, and um, you know, it did really feel like the nail in the coffin there on on Saturday night. Mm. And uh, Joel, you and I sat there together, and you know, it yes. was late in the third term, and we were like, "Gee, it's looking like an early train home at this point." And they teased us, and it was admirable they did have a crack and came back, but it was uh, all for nothing, unfortunately. Mm, yeah, we were sitting, you know, by the Don's bedside holding their hand and <laughs> felt a few squeezes towards the end there, but, yeah, <laughs> went limp. It went limp. It went limp. It went limp. Um, I, I will ask you this question because I've been – I was thinking about this uh, this morning. It, 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 putting a mathematical finals chance aside, like what do you want to see out of this final – Four weeks of footy. There's four games to go. Um, you know, plenty can happen. We've got two games that we should win and then two games that will be quite challenging. Um, Jesse, what do you want to see out of this final month? Four wins and a finals berth <laughs> would be <laughs> ideal. Well, besides that. Yeah. Us to resurrect ourselves from the coffin that we're about to put ourselves in. But just to go back to where we were at in the first half of the season, really, I mean, if you look at the defensive profile, In the past five to six weeks, we've dropped off, not considerably, but we, you know, we've gone ranked from the fifth best defensive team in the AFL to the ninth, which is probably pretty fair to where we're at. I feel like we are playing uh, as a team that probably is just sort of outside the eight in terms of, you know, where we stack up. But over the weekend, there were just some major concerns with the way that we were setting up the ground defensively. I just felt like every time the Swans had the ball, mm. 
particularly the the our, our ability to defend the corridor. It just mm. seemed like every time they had the ball, there was three or four of their players in, completely free with n- not five meters of space, uh, up to ten or fifteen meters of space, and. I'm not exactly sure what it comes down to, but I'm just so sick of not seeing this team defend. Mm. And it's just the one thing that we've been hoping to have as a hallmark of our football team for five, ten years now. And to to get a small taste of what it looked like in that first ten rounds was amazing. And to see it drop away, it's just so typical Essendon. I mean, yeah. back in the day where we played with Woosha, even with Hurdy, Bomber Thompson, we were a front-ended team. And and then we moved to a team where we didn't perform very well in the first half of the season. But traditionally, the Essendon that I know is perform really well, get to the bye, and then just completely lose touch with Mm. the game plan and all of the effort that you put in at the start of the season. So I'm just hoping that there can be a reprieve because I do think that this team is better than what we've produced, even though everyone says that we're exceeding expectation. Well, I disagree. I mean, you, you put together a body of work and played 12 really good games throughout the year. We're clearly capable, and I'm not exactly sure what the answer is at the moment. What about you, Joe? What do you want to say from the, the last month? Yeah, I would, I would certainly agree with that. Um, you know, that was probably one thing I was able to hold on to, um, even through some of the losses in the year. The effort was still there, and, and you know, it was like, mm-hmm. okay, well, we're not playing – these aren't typical lesson in losses where you can see people lose faith and, and stop trying. Mm. Um, and so that was still holding me through. But then sort of this is the first game of footy I watched live for five or six weeks now. And just seeing how slow everyone one was to react after a mistake or you'd make a turnover and everyone would drop their heads and the ball would be moving before anyone decided to get up and start running again. And it was just really disappointing. Um, so I certainly would love to see that. Mm. I think also just starting to see – these people who need a crack like, you know, Borders and, um, you know, Voss and that sort of thing, getting back in the team is obviously mm. that, you know, let's let's see what they can do. Um, you know, I thought Nick Bryan was actually, it was great to see him play. It was awesome. Um, Get him to you know, well. Yeah. But yeah, that, that's, that's probably it for me. Just mm. a couple of rays of light that we can hang on to beyond, you know, season results. Yeah. Um, a, a, a point that you, you mentioned there, there was a passage in the game and I, I, I said it to you where we gave away, I think it was a 50 meter penalty mm. and it was Hobbs who obviously very young and I can't remember, it might've been Guelphie or maybe Perkin and the pair of them, I watched them run 25 meters with their back to the ball mm. and the ball went past them before they even turned to look. And I'm like, where's the switched on? Where's mm. the switched on to that side? Like I'm, I don't feel like you're getting away with that with with certain teams. Like people aren't sort of doing that, and that was a moment for me where I'm like, "Gee, like I feel like we've really lost yeah. accountability." Yeah, and that's yep. sort of where it's been um, post by. Um, the same question to you, Mert. Where do you? Well, what do you want to see from the final month? Yeah, I don't know. I'm I'm a bit different on that point. I think for me, the most disappointing part of our, our last three or four weeks has been our forward entries. Yep. Mm. Um, I think we've been all right defensively. I think. Certainly on the weekend when, you know, we get 70, high 70s inside 50s, then um, you'd expect to kick a few more goals. And it's not often that you lose a game when I think we were plus 20 or something like yeah. that inside 50s. So we've got heaps of the ball down there and we just seem to be so Peter-centric. Yeah. And it wasn't until the last, really the last quarter when we actually lowered our eyes. And what we were doing, you know, particularly in like the Carlton game, for instance, which, mm. you know, that and the Adelaide game were the last kind of two games we really played well, poured as well. Mm. We're really changing direction mm. as we were going into the forward 50 and it wasn't just bombing it from, you know, 70 or 60, 70, 80 and just, you know, hitting up that kind of mm. 20 or 30 metre out spot that we just do all the time otherwise Mm. it was going sideways it was switching it was creating a different angle for the opposition defenders to have to deal with and then lowering our eyes and hitting a target in there so that seems to have gone by the wayside and I mean I'm pretty similar to Joel in that I would just love to see some of these kids um you know I've spoken about Baldwin heaps and yeah I think you know we see Brian come in and all of a sudden he actually looks good he has a doesn't kick him but has a couple of set shots on goal and actually Mm. looks like he can play forward Mm. and it really begs the question of what's been happening in the past and I think there's you know I've got a list here and 
you know, Voss is another one of them who's been wasted in the VFL in, you know, really one of the worst sides in the VFL. And he's kind of come out and he's kicking about two goals a game. Mm. So he's done pretty well in that kind of context of a really poor side. I don't know, you know, what else he could really be doing in there to come mm. in. Um, so, yeah, I think it's just been a tough ask on a lot of our lot of our players. We're playing a much older side than we could be. Yep. So I'd really like to see us be playing some of those young players, but it doesn't be it doesn't seem to be the way that Scott's gonna go. So I'm not gonna hold my breath. Yeah. Uh pre season a, a a work colleague of mine who's a North Melbourne supporter, he said, get ready for Scott to be stubborn and pick senior guys and you not see a lot of young guys. And I was like, no, nah, no, nah, it won't be like that. And look, we have mm. we have seen some young guys at time, although maybe forced through um injuries in that. But I I have sort of started mm. to feel it now that there are people in the team who you know, uh, would get get away with performances that other obviously younger players wouldn't. And, yep. Um, we've sort of sent throughout the season. Um, There's no selection pressure, uh, I feel, in that mm, sense, which yeah. is a, a commodity of a really high-performing football club. Mm. And, you know, for the performance that I saw out of Laverde over the weekend, it's probably one of the worst games I've seen him play. In a really, Baldwin's been best on ground every game. Every week. The, and you, yeah, would, and like, you would think at a, at a high-performing football club that has an onus on accountability and performance, which is something that we've preached at the beginning of the year, a Baldwin should come in this week and replace a Laverde. And I can guarantee you, we saw it last year with Shield, when you drop a uh, number one player mm. um, that plays in his spot, for a younger player, the determination and the performance and the output you get out of those mm. players increases exponentially. And I feel like the same has to be said about a number of players. I mean, making a statement, and I know, you know, he actually had an all right game over the weekend, but, you know, even a few weeks ago, dropping Parrish, you're not mm. right. You're, mm. you're, you're calf, go and play in the VFL, you know, bring a Sardis in or something, mm. something along those lines. I do definitely agree even, with you, Matt. Even at the start, of, at the start of the season when Dyson Apple was very bad and yep. he's been great since and we'll get into some goods in a bit, but there was a time there where he needed to be dropped. He got subbed and that was yep. the closest um, the closest we we got to it. Um, well, we, Wiedemann's the biggest one. Wiedemann's the yeah, biggest one. Like there's, there's no other team in the comp that is playing that guy for, you know, he didn't doesn't kick a goal for seven weeks in a row, six or seven I think weeks. it was eight in the end. Might have, got to, might have, might have finally yeah. got to eight. So, like, like that's those numbers are just outrageous. Yeah. Think, think about it's, where it puts you, though, as as a player. If you know, no matter how you play, you're going to play yeah, exactly. the next yeah, week. Right. And that's, that's the problem with – the selection but also and their con- mindset. conversely what it does to these young guys and not actually rewarding their performance yeah you're big on that and then someone like Brian who you know is being right up there as best on just far too good as Scott has recognized far too good for VFL level comes into the seniors plays 35% game time gets dropped next week yeah mm. happens three games in a row and then just drop next week and then you know finally gets a chance up forward for the first time on the weekend and he's looking really good and it's like well yeah give him a crack like mm. he's what six foot ten? I reckon maybe you could play up forward. And some and some of his some of his work with the ball, just yeah. Ball, his and his tap, his hit outs to advantage. His hit, out, his hit outs are so good. Yeah. yeah, he's been really good, really really good yeah. since he's coming. But he's still the most game time he's had on the ground is fifty eight percent. Still, yeah. it's crazy. I mean, look, I mean, he had fifteen touches at fifty eight percent time on ground as a ruckman. Yeah, mm. Mm. it's pretty. Think that's, about that. That's pretty good. I mean, I'd be interested to see what they. Obviously, rate is tank like, but you know, I, I think we all agree that his time's too low. Um, I do want to go back to the delivery inside fifty Oof. discussion because I Oof. think that is the biggest God. point in this game. Get your tissues I mean, out, um, it fucking sucks. But before we mm. do, um, obviously, uh, we all heard my eulogy off the top. I'd like to throw to one of you guys for the next one before we cover that. Would anyone like to? Yeah, I'll go. Take the first change, Mert. Thank you. Mm. Today we gather here with heavy hearts to bid. Farewell to the 2023 season of the Dons. Season that has left us with a profound sense of sorrow and loss. As we reflect on the journey, our emotions are tinged with sadness. For the road was filled with heartbreak and challenges that weighed heavily on our spirits. No Waller, no Baldwin, no Sardis. No Voss. Play Wiedemann. Not Wanganoon. <laughs> Drop Menzi. 
Don's loss. <laughs> <laughs> Amidst the dreams and aspirations that accompanied the beginning of the season, BDB, coach we held dear, faced struggles that eventually cast a shadow over the team's endeavours. As he stood on the sidelines, the weight of responsibility and expectation seemed too much to bear. The burden of disappointment bore down on his shoulders. We remember the moments when hope seemed within reach, but cruel twists of fate denied us the triumphs we longed for. Darcy Parrish kicking zero goals four against Port Adelaide. <laughs> oh, that, was, that was so bad. Uh. The losses mounted, and with each passing game, the realisation that this season would not fulfil the dreams we held dear settled in our hearts. As we say goodbye to this season, we hold on to the belief that every end marks a new beginning. The memory of this season will serve as a poignant reminder of the inherent beauty and fragility of sports and the unwavering, stupid, blind, mindless, delusional loyalty of the Essendon faithful. To the Essendon Bombers and their 2023 season, we offer our heartfelt gratitude for the memories, struggles and the bonds that unite us as one. May the pain of this season propel us forward, inspiring a newfound determination to overcome adversity and emerge stronger in the seasons that lie ahead. R.I.P. All right, pay. Well done. Right, well said. Pay. Well said. That was beautiful. Yeah, well spoken. That was beautiful. Yeah. I, I had to put my sunglasses that I can't see out of uh, on for that. But um, a beautifully, beautifully mm. put um, eulogy. Um, does there anything? Do you want to add anything to that job before we jump on the delivery chat? Because I feel like no, you I want to jump, say something. I want to jump into that. You want to jump into it? <laughs> you want yeah. to jump into it? That was shocking. Feet first. <laughs> Go on. <laughs> yeah. Feet first. Yeah. So. Again, as I said, I haven't been, haven't watched the footy for a while live. Um, You've and, been away for people who don't know. Yeah, I was, I was away. Um, and when I, when I left, we were fifth, and when I returned, we were twelfth, and then slipped into thirteenth straight away. Um, Could have been the but, quickest fall from fifth to thirteenth, <laughs> shocking, away, ever. And but the, I, I just couldn't like. I was just so frustrated at the end of the game because it just felt like years and years and years and years of the same thing, and like it wasn't you know, your typical, oh, we're in the pack and we're just trying to kick it out of there. Like we had time and space to mm. be hitting targets. We would burst free. Brian would get a great hit out. Someone would do some good contested work and Parrish would have 10 metres to make a decision. McGraw would have six metres to make a decision. They've got time to lower their eyes and it's where is Peter? Put it on top of his head and you'd see like Durham or, you know, probably to a lesser extent Langford, but you'd see other players that were open, that were there, easy hit ups and it's just the same culprits again and again and again. And mm. it's, it's kind of not acceptable and but they clearly have to be talking about it as a coaching panel, mm. but on the flip side, it's also destroying Darcy Parrish's value out in market. Like, mm. you know, he can go, but like <laughs> now he's worth 500 or something like that. If he can't <laughs> kick. Yeah. Look, I look compared to the last week and we ran it pretty hard. I actually thought he was, wasn't too bad. Like I went back and watched the game and like, I'm pretty sure two of Langford's goals were him actually making really good, really good kicks inside 50 mm. to his advantage, get him. Like he had two goal assists and six score involvement, but he also had a lot that didn't, you know, just went to Sydney defenders. Um, but again, he wasn't alone. Everyone was doing it. Yeah. And whilst Peter was, you know, getting hit in the face by the ball and dropping the ball, which is unlike him, mm. there are times where like the delivery to him, it's like they like I would seem an absolute full stretch. Just mm. trying to go like backwards with the ball, and I'm like, it's just not to someone's advantage. We, and no, we rarely kick it to advantage. Exactly, yeah. and it's hard to do. Like it, it is a hard thing to do, and there's a lot of teams who struggle with it. But I feel like there are some times where they just go, I'd rather just go kick it that extra thirty meters than roll the dice of hitting up someone mm. a bit shorter, and you know, and it get and it turns over. You know, it's it's really deflating. Like you know, when we had some early dominance. Um, in the last quarter and admittedly we ended up kicking goals afterwards but you see it like go in there terribly come straight out go in there terribly come straight out everyone drops their heads it's mm. like fuck, why are we going back and forth and doing this again and again mm. you know and, and that sort of leads to so many people like you know 
they then give 90% effort instead of 100% effort. They send jog at 90% instead of running at 100%. And it's just like, it's really deflating. And obviously you hear the crowd there going, Ugh, mm. Ugh, oh, and they can obviously feel it. But like, mm. what does it take to make that change? How many years have we had to say the exact same thing I, for someone to do it? I actually heard the Bronx cheer for when Peter yeah. Wright took a mark, which that, is pretty, I didn't, I thought that's a rough. lot. Like that's, yeah. it's really bad. I that mean, was. he did, and he has since coming back from injury, look very similar to how he looked when we kind of picked him up first from Gold Coast, very yeah. scared of taking contact. And I, I feel like it's been a little bit uh, inherent within the team at the moment mm. in particular. And look, I think you look to your leaders in games, which is why at times we can be a bit hard on them. And I think over the past two or three weeks, Merritt's looked really uh, apprehensive to take any contact. He's mm. looked... At times, he's had a player two, three metres away from him and he's really rushed it off his boot, which has been un uncharacteristic of him. And I'm not sure whether that's a byproduct of other players around him doing the same thing. But I do feel yeah. like when – and this is a, this is just something that we've dealt with as a football club for a really long time. Sydney is one of the best pressure teams in the AFL. The dogs put considerable pressure on us. Every team – this year, top four to top 16 that's played well against us and destroyed us in a quarter has dropped up their pressure game significantly. And we still really struggle to rise mm. to the occasion when teams bring that pressure and we just I, continue I think, to throw it on the boot. Yeah, I, th I think when we're playing our best footy, we have massive tackle numbers. Mm. And that, like we've seen it this year and it's been no numbers that are like, you know, a leading possession getter like Merritt getting eight tackles or something like that, plus, mm. you know, Caldwell getting similar numbers. And, you know, then Paco's had heaps in the in the forward 50 as well for most of the year. And so it's kind of all over the ground. We tend to have huge tackling numbers when we're playing well. And I think that's certainly, I don't know what they've actually been. Like I'm just looking at them now, I think the most we had is kind of four from Merritt mm. um, on the weekend. So they're not huge numbers. And I think on that point, Jesse, I think you're right. Like, when we're playing our best footy, it's certainly when we've got our pressure up, we've got our contested ball up and mm. we've got our tackling up. Yeah. And I, you, like you, you mentioned it earlier, Mert, like we, we won the hard footy. We won the mm. contested possessions. We won a lot of clearances. We got it inside forward 50, but we just across the board butchered the footy. Like mm. if you go purely based off kicking efficiency, which, you know, depending on what part of the ground you're playing, it can uh, boost your numbers up a little bit, but the bottom 10 players, nine of them are Essendon players. And you go through the, the, the lower guys, their midfielders and their forwards, like Darcy at 47, McGrath at 42, Brian at 40, Colwell at 37, Menzi at 28, Davey at 25, and then Jake Kelly went at 20% by foot. Wow. Which mm. when- How many touches was, did he have? He had was, a few. Was, was Jake Kelly, why was Jake Kelly played if he was going to be played I, yeah. like off a half forward flank in the forward line Is on that the where he was playing? It seemed like it, didn't it? He, he, he was pushing he, up a he lot. He started on the wing quite a few times because yeah. Cox was back. And like what, that is, that is awful selection. It's, I've, yeah, I've that's I've been, shocking. like, I've been- Pretty obviously pretty harsh in our selection for large parts of He's the year. He's Brad's favorite though. But that is crazy selection. It's yeah. Brad's favorite boy. He's yeah. a shin boner. He, he had a stinker <laughs> the week before. Like yeah. that is just so dumb. And we've got all these guys in the VFL. Like we've got Tipper in the VFL who's actually playing really well and he's worked on his fitness heaps. And we've got Tipper Voss, um, and a few others. I, mean, I think Massimo before he got injured. Yeah. Wanganeen on the and, wing looked and great this year. Wanganeen and, and Menzi last week, who had, you know, four or five tackles each in the forward 50 mm. last week. And that's exactly what we needed. Instead, we're playing Jake Kelly in the forward line or yeah. off a wing forward line. Like when we come off a game like last week mm. and we've got virtually no forward pressure whatsoever, and that was a lot better on the weekend. But we've got all these kids kind of sitting in the toes and we've got Tipper who's a seasoned player sitting in the toes and is a seasoned gun. And we haven't been able to kick goals from our small forwards. Then like, why aren't these guys playing? Yeah. Like I – Even Tipper off half forward with that delivery into half forward. 100%. exactly what we would need. It's, biggest, it's his biggest skill. Like mm. I – if look, it, look at the effect Hind has had like the last two weeks, coming off the bench last week or yeah. getting subbed on and then again – on Saturday night. Yeah, like he has his moments, but he he had 19 kicks and went at 94%. Yes, when you play off back line, he can pat it up. But 
he's you know he's brought something yep. to it. And like if this experiment to play Kelly off a wing or half that was the experiment, that's a failure. Never yeah. do it again. If he's yep. playing, you play him in a lockdown defender role because that's his best job. He's not a very good kick, but he's tough as mm. guts and he can lock someone down. But he cannot play up the ground. And I understood they had to run this thing to try Cox as, as a key defender, and we'll get to him in a bit. But Kelly just can't be played up the ground. He doesn't have the skills for it. Yeah. It doesn't work. The, I think the like the flaws of uh, Brad Scott's coaching, and I guess we don't want to go into it. it it's it's the first season still, yeah. but it you just get There's worried. Some skeletons in the closet. You just get worried. Yeah, yeah, that's right. You kind of think back to like prior years, and you're like, how do we go from how we were playing to how we're playing now and, mm. you know, not respond week after week for like four or five weeks, you know, is our club turnaroundable by anyone? Mm. I, th- I think, I think the reality of Scott though is that like he, he is a, he is a good coach for and sure. he's got us playing a significantly better standard of football where we are a young side. And I think it's reality is it's just going to take him a while to, you know, no mm. one to know where he can actually where he can be flexible with certain players, mm. where certain players can play and where they can't play. And I think for most of the year he's he has overwhelmingly got it right. For sure. Particularly in terms of his use of the wings. Like basically for the whole year, we've had Martin and Dazza on the wings and it's worked perfectly. When we've brought Cox back that back, that has just kind of put another thing into the mix. And so I think that's kind of move obviously moved things around. Mm. You move Cox back again this way, keep him in the side, then, yeah, that obviously moves Kelly around. But So I think in the long term, there's just still question marks mm. o- in his mind over the personnel that are mm. in his best side. Yep. And when you get injuries chucked in there, you know, you get a few things change around. Yep. But at the same time, I think, as we've said, like when you've got kids who are playing their position or got, you know, seasoned veterans like Tipper playing their position and playing it well – then they just have to take precedence mm. over, you know, an untried. Yep. He's basically a, he's a bit of a one trick pony, Jake Kelly. Like mm. he's a, he's a good, um, you know, he's a good hard defender. But he's a, he's a Patty that's Ambrose. all he can really do. He's a Paddy Ambrose type player. Yeah, but not that tough. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, like I would I would hope in this latter state, you know, this you know twilight of the season that. And he himself said, he's like, oh, I don't look at the ladder. I don't try and think about this and this and this. That's what he said in his press conference anyway. But I would like to go, hey, all right, we are trying things out. Like this is the first time we've seen Cox play a key defender role. Mm. We've tried Jake Kelly up the wing. Let's see some more things. I'm uh, the, the understanding is that Sardis will play against West Coast this weekend, which mm-hmm. is exciting. Um, and hopefully we get to see some other things. Like I'm okay to try things out in this final four weeks, particularly against West Coast and North. Um, but – like, let's try things out. Like, it's not going to yeah, happen. Exactly. Like, I'm okay to see try some things out. Whilst got you know, whilst Paco is probably not going to play for a while. Yep. Stri- um, Draper's not going to play. Ridley's done for the year. Like, let's throw it, caution to the wind it, a little bit. Is yeah. there any like in a coach's mind? Is there ever any like? let's not make it into the finals and then get smashed week one and just have that dampen our spirits further. Does oh, that, does that cross no. any mind or is no, that just I would, more I would, a, I would have fucking, I would have loved to have played in the final this year because mm-hmm. it would have just been invaluable for guys like Hobbsy. For sure. Some of these young guys, like guys like Archie, they would have just absolutely loved that experience. Mm-hmm. And like people are saying, oh, we don't want to get belted again in the first final. Having that finals experience is so much more valuable than finishing ninth or tenth or eleventh sure. or twelfth, and it's so much better for the side. And anyone who thinks otherwise is just completely delusional. Yeah, like, I think it doesn't make sense. I, we, we we spoke about it last week. I think it's as an emotional thing for fans it's going through fear. a finals loss. It's the is, fear. That, that's the thing we don't want. It's the of fear course. of going but, through but again. The, that's what we don't but want. The, but the long rea- term, you are right. Rea- totally. Reality was four weeks ago we should have beaten Port, and mm. we were thinking. You know, we're sitting fifth on the ladder and we're thinking, well, you can actually beat anyone mm. in that top eight except for and Geelong, Geelong and except for – And the dogs. Now the dogs, now <laughs> yeah. the dogs. And except for Brisbane up there. Our but anyone else, here. I would have thought we could. Mm. And now we're sitting, we're sitting 13th Thirteenth. in the ladder. <laughs> yeah, it's crazy. So, yeah. Bloody good year of footy though. Just mm. to – I mean – Probably one of the best years yep. we've seen in terms of the how even the competition is. And Brad says it every week. And honestly, I, I couldn't agree with him more. But this is back to what we were saying before. I agree with what you're saying Mert, about our forward 50 entries and that being something that has been an issue 
for a really long time. But in all fairness this year, our efficiency going inside forward 50 has actually been pretty good. I think one of the highest of the competition, um, which again goes to uh, big questions as to how that drop-off has occurred and Darcy Parrish has come back into the team and the drop-off has been very evident as a result of that. I don't think you can pin it on him though. I'm not saying that I'm pinning it on him. I'm just saying it is a factor to be considered in the conversation. But the other part is the fact that we just have had teams score far too high scores against us I in think the second half I of think the year. just on that first point, I think Wright's come back and, 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 and we've just been yeah. blinded by him. Yeah. As we just try and kick it to him. It's it's like our Carlton look good now that Mackay's out of the yeah, Mackay's out of the team. Yeah, mm. because Kerno's a freak. And we should just play Langers. Just get rid of Peter. Play Langers full <laughs> Maybe forward Peter for the rest of his career. <laughs> get, yeah, put Peter fullback. I'm sure he'd love fullback contacts. We need we need 20 Kyle Langfords to be honest. He is for as obviously for as important as Peter is realistically for us. He, he's you know out of anyone in our list, he can provide the least forward pressure mm. uh, down there, and that is an element that was a big part of our game while he was not in the team. Mm. So I think that has, yeah, him coming back has as much of an impact as Parish. It does goal. help though. He kicked, four, he kicked four goals. Yeah, I was did. about yeah. to he say. Four goals. Like he it was, four goals. it was actually, it, oh, was, it was a really, mm. really down game by his marking standards. He got his hands to a lot of balls. He should have kicked eight with mm. the amount of times he had opportunity, yeah. but to still get yeah. a return of four out of him and he's looking really out of form, it's pretty good signs for the future. Hoping that, you know, next year he can, just absorb a bit of contact again and get some more confidence in his shoulder. He's going to kick so many against West Coast on the weekend. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I hope so. West Coast, West Coast and North. Tom, Tom Barras isn't playing. The West Coast have had a win. They are and shutting it, up shop. It's at Marvel as well. Like yeah. he just, yeah. It's, Mackay it's will keep GG. him goalless. We'll pick him up and Mackay <laughs> won't keep anyone goalless next year <laughs> yeah. for us. Yeah. He's got to worry about hitting his foot with a footy first. Yeah, that, that vision Perfect was Perfect Don's play, though. That vision yeah. was uh, getting in. Yeah. Ugh, that was Sign him weird. up. Yeah. I, would, I would imagine how nice it would be to have Sydney's team. They can all kick the footy so yeah. well. I wouldn't mind Errol. Oh, oh, man. Geez. Why did we not tag Errol? I'm sorry. This is a we don't topic tag. of conversation that needs to be addressed. Bont and Libba destroyed us. What midfielder this year that isn't an elite midfielder hasn't come close to winning their team or have won their team the game almost solely off the back of their performance? Errol Goulden we won can't. them that game over yeah. the weekend off his boot. We can't absolutely tag, won it. Can't tag Libba. Yeah. We no sh- point we sh- look, we kept Cripps out of the game. Birkin played a really mm, good game. Yep. Setterfield took Clary out of the game until the game was done. And then yep. Clary had the 20 worst touches in a quarter you'll ever see. Yep. Um, they're probably the two ones. And I guess... Again, it's Setterfield's our defensive yeah. midfielder. He's our CDM. That's- There's no one that can go to Bont, for example. <laughs> well, we had apart Perkins, from Setterfield. We had yeah. Perkins go to him. But even we saw how that went. Yeah, exactly. And, and Caldwell yeah. and everything else we could throw in. He's too big. But you know strong. what? You guys all say no one can go to him, but it's not hard to just run next to someone the entire day I just and had not give him kind, five, ten kind, minutes of space. kind of is with Bont, though. Well, I just, had, I just had the radio on the way here, and they were talking about how um, GWS moved Callan Ward onto Bont at halftime and shut him out of the game. And that's how they won. Completely. Mm. Yes. You know? yep. Exactly. So, it, no, it's. I'm just sick mm, of Carl seeing. Ward's a loser, though. Yeah, we don't like Callan <laughs> Ward on this podcast. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. I just love would, to love, dive, would love, love to, dive. to just see a coach suck up their pride and just decide to, to not buy into this system for one game mm. and just defend a good player who is clearly the game breaker for mm. the team. And Errol he's ran around with the biggest license he's had all year. I don't remember him having one. I don't remember one possession that he had. He got caught holding the ball by Guelphie. Mm. Guelph was good. Mm. I think it was someone. It was Guelph. Yeah. Someone got him holding the ball. Just outside that's, 50. That's probably the only And then there thing was three of us trying to tackle him in the forward line and he oh. slipped out of every single oh one of our God. tackles. Who was that? McGrath. Laverde and someone else. Yeah. Laverdi was still playing Fortnite in, in that moment. I think <laughs> wasn't his. Uh, wasn't his. But please, McGraw was just focused tag on his someone. podcast. Yeah, yeah. Please. Um, the absence of Jordan Ridley was massive. Yeah. on the weekend. He's so important. Mm. And like I, I, I said this to, to Joel during the, during the game, and I was like, it was a weird moment for me being like, we have to get BZT on a Marty. Like he's our best defender right now because Lav's been pretty good. He was terrible, and Coxie, mm. I'm not there yet with Coxie. I like some things that he did, 
but I feel like there's still some things that needs you to work on. You took McDonald out of it. Yeah, but I, I, look. I was I, impressed with Cox's game. I, look, I, I don't know. Maybe I'm just being harsh. Laid some tackles. I think positive signs, yeah. Yeah, no, definitely he positive did, signs. He did lay a couple of good tackles. Strong yeah. tackles. Like, he, mm, he yeah. does tackle really well, Coxie. Yeah. He didn't look like a tumbleweed yeah. for once. It was no. nice. De- look, definitely some good signs. There were few, there were a few of those, like, pack marks that Amadi took and – McDonald just literally just like bumped Cox off his mm. balance and Cox couldn't jump at the footy. Right. And I think that's just something that comes with being a young defender. There was also that one out the back, which I watched, and mm. BZT and Coxie just both got like caught together and neither of them went back. And that's young, inexperienced, things like that. I think there are good signs there though. Mm. Um, like I'm not saying don't put him there again. It looks like- We're not talking about Jack Kelly on the wing. Like I'm, I'm happy to keep <laughs> trying Coxie there, but- People were saying he's an absolute well better. I'm like, no, no, there's still plenty to grow. So, you know. But he was getting some go-go gadget arms in, which is he nice was. to see those was. extendo arms, which yeah. we haven't seen for many yep. years. And he's a good kid. I thought his decision-making was a bit quicker this week than last week. Like, he was getting the ball to hand a bit quicker, getting the ball to Some of his handballs were super clean as yeah. well. Yeah. In the corridor, there was this one. He picked it up off the deck, one hand, and it was one of the cleanest handballs I've seen mm. one of our players fire out. So he's clearly – it's just good to see. It is good to see. It's say. good to see some of the makings of his potential and talent. Mm, I yeah. feel like we've been robbed of it and mm. you can live in quite a negative space without really seeing someone show yeah. their capability. So – Just stop playing him on the wing then. Like, yeah. it's crazy. Would – so, like, okay, okay, let's let's fast forward a little bit. Let's say – let's say we get – a Mikhail or Radigali or whoever it is, let's say BZT stays, which is obviously another big question as well. Like, how does this backline mix look? Because I, I said to you on Saturday night, Joel, in my ideal world, Laverde plays the Kelly role yep. of taking the mid-sized player. Yeah. Then you have new, that's a lock in. Then you have new key player. Then you have BZT. Mm. Then you have Ridley. And then, then I'm not sure what Cox quite does in this scenario. Whether he's like a sort of intercepting halfback or up the ground. Um, but I, I quite like the look of that because this yep. was a game where I was like, God, we need to get Laverde off these guys who have – He could know, probably play eventually him. where Heppel's playing, I would say. That's yeah. probably where he'll end up sliding Yeah, I agree. Mm. That's a good call. That's a good call. I kind of like the idea of him – well, like it hasn't happened and it probably never will, but I would have liked the idea of seeing him play off a half-forward flank. Yeah. Just kind of a roaming half-forward. Like he's got a really good tank. He mm. can get up the field a bit and also just good let him – match. Yeah. Just let him fly at the ball. Yeah. I yeah, like I like that as well. I like it. Um, we'll get into some goods, but before we do, I think we'll go to another eulogy um, from someone. I'll Joel, go. do you want to yep. go? Joel, All right. Joel, with his <clears throat> sunny song. <clears throat> the Oxford English Dictionary defines an aeroplane as a flying vehicle with wings and one or more engines. <laughs> the Oxford English Dictionary also defines a crash as an accident in which a vehicle hits something <laughs> usually causing damage and often injuring or killing people. <laughs> the Oxford English Dictionary defines disappointment as the feeling of being sad because something has not happened or been as good or successful as you expected or hoped. The Oxford English Dictionary <laughs> defines learning as the process of learning something. As much as this is tough, I believe in reincarnation. The Oxford English Dictionary defines reincarnation as a new version of something from the past. Go the fucking new planes. <laughs> I like it. That got me. That got me. <laughs> Definition of learning is learning something. <laughs> that, that, that absolutely. That's straight out of the book. <laughs> See, someone needs to call up the Oxford Dictionary because that's. Uh, I was using oh. OxfordDictionary.com, so I don't know what the source was. <laughs> yeah, dot com. Dot com. Mm. Oh, that was great. That was great. Um, let's we had go- the second most inside 50s of all 18 clubs on the weekend. There we go. Okay. Guess how many we had? Was it like a 65 or something? 69. Hey. hey oh. <laughs> nice. Nice. Um, and party. We'll get to yeah. some we'll get to some goods. Um uh coaches votes. Kyle Langford got seven. Merritt got five. Caldwell got three. Dustin Epnell also got three. Um so that were the clear standouts. Jesse, you've been leading the positivity front. Who would you like to give a, a good shout out to for a good game? Heps. Yeah. He was mm. outstanding. Probably the best game I've seen him play in a number of years. For the club, he's been a real general down there. Which, uh, when our backline needed someone to step up from a leadership perspective, he really was that anchor for us. Unfortunately, he didn't have a, a whole lot of defenders around him uh, following his stride. But he's put together an amazing 
back half of the season, probably one of the only players other than Merritt and Ridley that you can probably, or, and Langers, hang your hat mm. on and say they've mm. played really consistent football throughout most of the year. And he's done an, an amazing job to earn himself, in my opinion, another contract for next year. Yep. So I'm, I'm around. super mm. pleased with it. You know, I obviously was not a huge advocate at the beginning of the year. And I think that's probably fair and rightly so, but I'm the first to put my hand up and, uh, acknowledge someone when they're yep. playing good football and, you know, he's definitely earned his position in that team at the moment. So hats off to the ex-skipper. Mm. Yeah, no, he has. He's He's gone from a, a very early bend in the season to, um, yeah, out of the bend. And, yeah, I hope he goes around again next year. Yeah. Because, um, you know, I would love to see Dyson Heppel in a team that wins a final in this side if it is is to be uh, next year or, I mean, who knows, this year, but probably not. Um yeah, I'd like to see him in there. Yeah, his his leadership is um, really in his courage as well. I, I think he really leads away, like backing back into packs and like, you know, putting his body on the line. He, he kind of, I mean, he's done that forever, but I think that's really, really important for everyone that's around him at the moment. Um, so I'd love to see it. I think his foot has uh, improved dramatically. Mm. Just looking at the way that he's covering distance on the ground again and working from contest to contest, he, he does look like he's really gliding mm. along the deck at the moment. So I'm really happy to see because, you know, I think we all know his body's really let him down. So, and as we've seen with, you know, Setterfield, Stewards with his missing foot, you know, these foot injuries, they're they're hard to come by. And that's my ma- my major concern at the moment with Paco. It's just a bit of plantar fasciitis. I've had that. Not good. No good at all. Not good. No good at all. Um, I'd like to give a shout out to Jai Caldwell. Yes. Um, I thought that was the best game he's played in a while. Did butcher the footy a bit, but I think is as a, a coal face in and under ball winner, very, very good. Mm-hmm. Um, and kicked a nice goal and yeah, hasn't hasn't felt like he's had like crazy midfield minutes um the last sort of month or so, but felt like he got a really good op- like really good crack at it and played really well. So yeah, I was very happy with that. Mm. He's um he really looks like a player of the future. You know, it's it's just it's really exciting to see him build and he does a lot of courageous things and, and he is someone that does lift, I think, when the game names it as well. So I'm yep. very, very excited to see him grow into a 150, 200, 250 game player. Definitely. 11 yeah. clearances. Yeah. 11, clear- yeah. 11 mm. clearances is massive. Um, and was that how many? He's leading on the ground, actually. Yeah. And he had, he was a lot of center bounces as well. So he had a, had a real good crack at it. Um, I guess we did speak about Nick Bryan, but he was really, really good. Um, great to see him get that opportunity. And yeah, I don't think we'll see Draper play again this year. They keep saying, oh, it's a couple of weeks. It's yeah. a couple of weeks. He's done. It's not like just. Rest him up. We don't need him. But he was out on the ground with the um, specky bag, mm. um, which I thought was interesting given he's not playing. Like, you don't want pet blokes jumping all over him. Um, so I thought that was an interesting move before the game. <laughs> oh, well, got the bag, though. Yeah, he had the bag. Yeah, he was out on the ground with the bag. Yeah, so that's all good. It's all good. Um, who else? Zach Barrett was all right. Kyle, Kyle Langford. Can we talk about Kyle Langford? Yeah. I think he needs a proper mm. a proper Far out. Um, it's a, I mean, it's probably a two-horse race, but Langford or Merritt for Crichton right now? Merritt. You reckon Merritt? Yeah. I think it depends on how it's the tough. voting. It's, quick. Yeah. it's going to be very close. Yeah. Merritt will have a lot of very clear best ons, but Langford probably features. Langford's also had quite games. a few, quite yeah. a few like bags of four and, mm. and a couple of fives now. Like he's, he'll be in the mix. And That's a, so, someone who like earlier in the season, it was like basically if him and we didn't turn it on, we were gone for like he won a few games off his own boot. Yeah. Mm. It's so good to see how far he's come. You know, he was obviously a whipping boy a little bit when he first started. So it's awesome to see him rise out. And he's just so reliable. Like you can just count on him for goals every single week, no matter yep. what. Yeah. Super important. Definitely. Definitely. Um, you got a good for me, Matt? I, no. no. All right. No good. All good. <laughs> I've, got, I've, got, I've got one. Yep. Um, and I know I talk about Hobbs all the time, but I thought when we needed someone to lift, he did a couple of really important things. And, and again, just like seeing him and – Jai and Perko, he's played a couple of good games over the last, you know, six weeks. I, I saw more of it before I left, but that that makes me feel like we're heading in a good direction. Mm. I don't know how long it's going to take us to get there, but yeah, I think Hobbs did a couple of really important things to try and turn the tide as well. Definitely, definitely. Um, something else that was pretty good, Joel, was where we were sitting. Mm. Where we were sitting. Yes. Medallion Club. That was very good. Center wing. Beautiful seats. Thanks to our friends from Ticket Blaster. The Blasters. And what was the biggest perk of the night of being in the Medallion Club? Uh, the perk or the pack? 
the pack. It was the pack. Yeah. Um, Paco was roaming medallion, yeah. um, just up and down the aisles, photos with everyone, shuckers to everyone. It was yeah. beautiful. Yeah. So if you've ever needed a reason to get on Ticket Blaster and You're get yourself joking. one. No. Didn't you see the photo that Joel posted in, in our chat? You obviously no. didn't. Uh, <laughs> Paco, like literally, literally, I rolled in. And I'm like, "What's this crowd?" And then Paco's just there with kids, yep. men, women, everyone just getting on yep. for photos. And he's just always has been man, strolling so. up and down. Yep. Um, Sean McKernan, two weeks in a row, I've seen Big Shawnee getting around. Um, and Scotty James, a snowboarder, also floating around Medallion Club. So, yep. I mean, if you can upgrade your seat, and you might see That's a right. win, you'll probably see a win this weekend against West Coast. That's right, Which would. Mm. Um, and you might see Paco as well. So, That's why it. not? And you're as much as enoughy to like, you know, freak out when you see a player or minor, minor, minor celeb walk past as yep. we are. Yeah. Um, then it's very well worth the investment. Yeah. Yeah. I think Fle- I think I saw Dustin Fletcher there last week as well. He gets around. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, Paco literally literally wandering the aisles, getting photos pre-game. Highlight of my year. Yeah. Absolute <laughs> highlight of my year. Yeah. Um, yeah, can only can only get that thanks to our amazing friends from uh, Ticket Blaster. Um, before we go to, actually, I'll ask you, Jesse. Would you like to give a eulogy pre hot takes or post hot takes? How would you like to do it? We'll do a pre hot take. We'll do pre hot takes, and then we'll do hot takes, and we'll go to a break. So, um, floor is yours, my friend. Uh, slightly unprepared this one, Sash Faithful. So, bear with me here. Uh, as we all know. And as we all sit here today, we come together for the Eston Football Club. And this is not a funeral in my mind, is not. It could be the very beginning. As we all know, Christ died for our sins. And I feel like I've currently died for all of Essendon's sins. (laughs) (laughs) And every day I'm reliving my nightmare of... Finishing 12th, finishing 9th, maybe making a final and losing by 60 points. But this may be the season as Christ (laughs) rose on the third day. The Dons could rise on the fourth week, the last week of the finals on the hallowed turf, beating the Magpies, rolling into September. Be good. Hmm. Amen. 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 Praise be the Paco. Praise be the Paco. Praise be the Paco. Nozzle off. Um, thank you for that. Ill prepared, but I like it. You ran. You ran with it, and that was very good, Jesse. That's pretty good. Thank you very yeah, much. Thanks. Thank you very much. You, Rousing. Bit of a like. Um, I don't. Know, I don't know what you call those guys. Like uh, the, the preachers. A bit of a. And I say, like you, you kind of went up. A I was little, feeling. I was yeah, feeling. Yeah. I, was, I mean, yeah. you got. You got, you got the know. kid on. I'm like a Yeah. I'm definitely being doing a bit of that. Yeah. You've got. You've got. You've got the kid on for it. Yeah. If you see me knocking on your door tomorrow with an S and memorabilia. Have you heard about Lord and Savior Jack Stringer? <laughs> <laughs> Correct. Yeah. Um, well, come on in. Come on in. Um, let's get to some hot takes. Thank you very much to everyone who sent them through. Um, a few to play this week, all very entertaining. Um, of course, a big language warning for those who don't like um, any F and Cs, but there's a couple here, so let's mm. let's listen to them. But um, a bit late on the language warning. Yeah, uh, it's okay. It's okay. okay. Um, thankfully for you, Mert, there is no mention of any genitalia. So can I tell you a guess at the first one? Yeah. Oh, shit. Uh, there's going to be a couple. There's going to be a couple of freshies. So we, we love a bit of that. So uh, first one's from I'm so sad. And I'll tell you, having listened to this, this bloke is pretty sad. <sighs> I'm so sad. <laughs> <laughs> what do you have to do to deserve this bullshit? No, it's just this one's every single time. Last time I actually enjoyed a Essen and Swans game at the end of the game was that fucking Dawson Parish kick from the boundary. Oh my god, <laughs> so annoyed. That guy was feeling it. Yeah, he was really feeling that one. Really, really, really feeling that one. Probably on the way back from the game to yeah. the train station. The yeah. long walk. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, next one's from the No More Optimism Bloke. Thank you very much. Eh, shit. <laughs> We're fucking shit. <laughs> fucking seriously, though. What if we've rocked up in the, like we did in the last quarter? Played like that in the whole game. 
We'd be fucking superstars. But nah, let's play off our man. Let's not man up. Let's play five metres off the fuckers. Not even put a fucking tackle on. No pressure. Let them waltz it out of defence and then wonder what the fuck's going on. We're shit. <laughs> well said. I like how many people are on the spot trying to think of things to say and will repeat the same thing three times. I think yeah. he relayed the same point yeah. three times. Yeah, it's good. Probably worth relaying it three times though because yeah. it doesn't happen very often. Uh, I mean, I repeat myself constantly on this show, so don't worry about that. Uh, next one's from I Hate Metro and I Hear You, Buddy. <laughs> fucking lose like that. And then the fucking trains are delayed 25 minutes. Oh, that's grim. <laughs> Fuck off. It's true they were. I stood on that platform for a while. Trains, just, and it was uh, so it was pretty, pretty bad. Uh, next one's from Bailey. Thank you, Bailey. Bit too Peter-centric, I think. This isn't a criticism of Peter, by the way. Love the big seven seater. But it's just too obvious what we're doing. Fucking kick it to someone else. Literally anyone else. Yep. Staying at the well, was he in a hospital or was he? <laughs> I think it was pedestrian, pedestrian crossing. I think it was pedestrian crossing. Yeah, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Flatlining on a bed. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think he was actually sitting next to the Dons in yeah. the hospital yeah. room <laughs> as they were about to go the, flatline. As a hand went limp. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, next one's from Fuzz. Thanks, Fuzz. Where shit. <laughs> That's it. Nice. Beautiful Fuzz. Fuzz. Beautiful Fuzz. Um, all right, what else have I got? We've got a couple more here. Um, that one cuts out halfway through, so we'll skip that one. Uh, GC from the B, thank you. Sunday morning, fellas, having a coffee, contemplating the season. I think I should be on the beers still. Can someone fucking tell me why? Season on the line, Scott, quarter one and quarter three, doesn't even come down to address the players. What is this shit? Season's over, boys. Hey, there's always next year. He's flat. He's flat. Did you say that? No, no, no. I'm pretty sure I did see him. He might not have. Like, like, he definitely did it three quarter times. I remember, like, looking at him and being like, oh, there Mm. he is. But maybe he didn't it first quarter time. But yeah, I don't, I can't recall. I can't recall. Season on the line, Scott. Yeah. Um, All right. Uh, Two to go. Uh, stop yelling at me, Devin. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to go against the grain to what I'm seeing a lot of other Essendon fans saying after that game against Sydney. Um, I reckon that was a pretty good effort. For a team that's been in piss-poor form the last few weeks, I reckon that was a good turnaround. And I, I hate to say it, but that was a good loss. We didn't lose the game in the last quarter. We lost the game in the third quarter. Um, and given the form that we've been in and given the form that those flogs Carlton are in, the last thing I want to do is play finals this year against Carlton and fucking lose. So that was a really good game for Menzi. That was a really good game for Nick Bryan. That was a really good game for a couple of players that have been struggling. There's a bit of a turnaround in form, both as a team and individuals. Um, Yeah, look, I don't want to play finals. I'm happy with that loss. We didn't deserve it to win if we couldn't, you know, if, if the, we, after that third quarter, we didn't deserve to win. So, yeah, uh, I'm not going to say don the rebuild, but uh, I'm pretty happy with the uh, sideways mediocrity that we're putting out right now. Just hoping to turn it around again big time next year. There we go. There we go. Anything to add to that? Strong else? disagree. Strong disagree from yeah. that. Strong disagree from that. Sounds... Brainwashed at the moment yeah, by nice loser talk. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it is. You're always in a game of footy if mm. the scoreline allows for you to be in it. I don't feel as if anyone deserves to win until the final siren's blown. And if there was another five minutes in that game, we probably would have won it. But sadly, um, there wasn't. I think the other thing as well with finals is that people might forget that everyone gets a week off in between um, the last round and finals. Isn't the Week off now before the granny. Didn't they change that? Really? No. Or am I forget? No. Am I am I wrong? There is a week off. Still. There's a week off. Yeah, there is a week off. So, so which which basically just means that it allows you to get some people back, actually give some blokes a rest. Which I think you know I don't see any reason why 
I know Carlton are playing better footy, but I don't see any reason why if we were playing finals, we wouldn't be able to beat a Carlton. Well, we beat them by like really, 35 for 40 points yeah. only five, six weeks ago. Yep. Yeah. That was the last time that they really had a bad game. So I think, yeah. And I think anyone can win it in the finals. Um, last one. This one was sent through pretty late and I haven't listened to it. So it may or may not go to where. So let's see how it goes. This one's from Corey's flat, but can sleep at night. G'day, fellas. Um, I was at the game Saturday night and just just felt a little bit flat and disappointed of how the boys played the whole four quarters. I mean, every game going forward was essentially a final and it just felt like the boys just weren't hungry enough. I mean, great comeback towards the end and you're going to give the boys credit for that. But I think the boy, like it looked like they only turned up for the first 10 and the last 10 minutes of the game. I think we were beaten convincingly in the second and third term. And so many times I saw, you know, three or three, a handful, you know, two or three Sydney players just find themselves in an acre of space. And I just thought, how, you know, where's the intent and where's the hunger? Anyway, on a positive note, we can finally sleep at night now with Buddy's retirement of the 1,066 goals that Buddy kicked. It felt like 850 were kicked against Essendon and probably 600 of them kicked against Kyle Hooker. Um, okay. Yeah. I don't know. Just a bit flat. Anyway, we go again, I guess. Go, Dons. Pretty nice to... Uh, Thank you, Corey. A bit poetic, I think, in the end that the player who's yeah. had the most success against us, we cut down with a <laughs> with career a ending injury. <laughs> injury. And the last game he plays against us is a shocker that he goes down with mm. hammy wise. We've kind of, you know, as a result, we were the yeah. one that had the last laugh. I, really. heard, I, I, I heard that he said to the Sydney people, he's like, look, I don't have to play against Nick Cox and BZT in the future. So I think I'm done here. So apparently that's what he said. <laughs> yeah. Apparently that's and what it's he said. Fair. The new generation. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. But look, I'm a uh, yeah, great player. Happy to see the back of him though. Cause my God, he's piled on some hurt for us. Jeez, uh, he looked good. <laughs> the first quarter and a half. I was like, Oh, oh my God. God, this is happening again. This yeah. guy. Just loves playing against us. So up and about. The fact that he was streaming off half back. Like, when have you ever seen Buddy streaming off half back and not, like not tearing it yeah. through the corridor? He yeah. loves playing against us. Yeah. It's a hard, hard one. Hard one. Um, fellas, unless there's any more points you want to add, we'll take a break and go chat to Paul. I do we? have one more point. I do sure. think it has uh, been understated how poor it is losing to a team that is clearly having quite a mediocre year at home in front of 40,000 of your own supporters. I mean, if we had a beaten Sydney over there, it would have been, you know, a game for the ages and you could see how much it meant to those Swans players. So the fact that we did dish up such a poor, uncompetitive couple of quarters you know, at our home ground in front of all of our home supporters, it magnifies the loss, in, mm. in my mm. opinion, significantly. And yep. again, just a concern. You'd think that you get that rise, and we did in the last quarter, but yeah, it was pretty pathetic for a couple of quarters mm. at your home ground. Yeah, it sucked. And like they're they're a very different team to the one they were six or eight weeks ago. Like they've pretty much got their players back, but like it's not an excuse. You yeah, know, they've had they've had a crap year. They're they're mentally fragile at the moment, Sydney. But now they've got their tails up to try and sneak into finals, which kills me to say for sure. And it's frustrating that they beat us and. Luke Parker and Buddy both did nothing. Yeah. But they still beat us. And Rampy. He was off for the entire last quarter with a calf. Yeah, Langford smashed him before he got injured. Mm. Did so, he? Yeah. I thought he did. Oh, was he playing on I thought you meant physically, like no, no, like he knocked him over. No, no, I mean like I mean like, he, like a couple of one on ones. He was against Langford and Langford. Yeah, that's totally a bad matchup. Out, totally outmarked him. But yeah, now we move on and we have to worry about Joel Amati and Errol Gordon for the next 10 years, so that'll be good. Mm. Um, I'm sure they'll kick many goals against us. Um, fellas, let's take a break. It's been a great morning with you all, um, but we'll move on to the wake and we'll speak to Paul Cousins <laughs> to hear about the VFL rap who, yeah, not a good week for the boys in the VFL. So um, we'll be back after this. Thank you very much. Welcome back, everybody. It is time for the VFL rap with our great friend, Paul Cousins. Hello, Paul. Hello, boys. Uh, yeah, I'm looking at a screen with the four of you looking very, very dapper. So um, I am wearing black on black, but I'm feeling a bit underdressed for the occasion. 
Yeah. Lucky I've left the camera turned off. Yes, mm. yes, yes. Yeah, we probably should have <laughs> let you know that it was a um, a black tie uh, event <laughs> this evening. Yeah. Um, yeah. But we appreciate your attendance nonetheless, Paul. No, no. Well, my pleasure. I'll just hide in the corner with all the other underdressed pokes. <laughs> yeah. Yes, I've done By that. By the table times. with the brownies on them. Yeah, I've done that a few times. Yeah. I've done that a few times. Yeah. Uh, Paul, we'll jump straight into it. Uh, it was a pretty poor afternoon at Windy Hill against the Swans. Yeah. Well, no reason to sugarcoat. It was crap. It was really disappointing, though. Um, after what was um, uh, been a few weeks, we had a narrow last last week, but uh, a couple of good wins prior to that and um, sort of felt like we had our, our mojo back a little bit. It was a really sort of disappointing loss. I, um, unfortunately, in front of a great crowd at Windy Hill, there was a big house in and, um, yeah, a lot of people there to, to watch us not, not perform very well, unfortunately. So always a bit sad when, when people show up and we don't, um, don't deliver. But anyway, we came up against a... Uh, a good experienced Swans outfit. They've had um, uh, their AFL list has been sort of ravaged by injuries in the first half of the year, which means their VFL results have, have looked a fair bit worse than they really are. They just haven't had many AFL blokes on the park in the VFL. And they've obviously now got quite a few bodies back at AFL level, which has sort of reflected on their AFL performance the last six or eight weeks uh, as well. And, and their VFL is really sort of starting to, they come up a bit now too. So um, strangely, um, in a game where they've been super inexperienced all year, they were actually much more experienced and sort of bigger bodies than that than us uh, yesterday. And unfortunately, that told in the end. It, it seemed there was some uh, parallels in the AFL boys and the VFL boys games against Sydney with the ease upon which we were allowing both teams to move the football in, in your opinion i mean from a skill point of view they they looked a class above throughout the day but where where do you think it went wrong over the weekend for the team no i agree and they they played in exactly the same way that as their afl did the night before that is that their their midfield sort of folded back pretty deep into their d50 um got numbers around the footy and when they won the footy they very quickly chain it out um, through their numbers they use up their numbers they chain out handball and they run out in waves and then they're able to sort of pick off kicks um, with, with a very sort of open field in front of them um, and get the ball quickly through through that sort of um, chain and wave running um, into a you know what? At both levels, I think at AFL and BFL were, were very open forwards, forward lines, which any defender will tell you is sort of a defender's worst nightmare. You know, it's very hard to, to stop a, a footy that's flowing in with numbers to, um, you know, to a whole bunch of one on ones, and that was very much the case. So, um, yeah, you give them credit for sure. They've um, that that seems to me to have been a bit of a tweak in their game plan at AFL level in recent times. And we saw how well that worked at times for them in the AFL Saturday night. And and we saw exactly the same thing yesterday where, you know, they really did use their numbers up and um, chain the footy together really well. And then were able to pick off targets ahead of the ball. And to be honest, we probably got a bit, our mid, mids and wings at times probably got a bit too sucked into the contest at both levels. And, um, and then they were able to spread away from the contest and we sort of weren't able to catch up and, and slow them down at all. So uh, it allowed a lot of scoring opportunities for them at, at both levels and, and they were good enough to take advantage and and really sort of were able to use that game style to put us to the sword a bit on uh, on Sunday. Mm. And look, big chuff to Sammy Wiedemann. Um I mean, he had another 25 touches. Um, how, how's his second week behind the ball? You know, how did he play? Yeah, look, he was under the pump, as they all were down mm. there. There was a lot of footy coming in, um, and his possession numbers probably reflect that a little bit. Um, you know, it's always – it's great to see a guy get 25 touches. It's a bit of a worry when he's a key defender. Mm. <laughs> um, when when you're seeing key defenders get those kind of numbers too often um, in games that you're losing, you know, if you're winning and you're controlling, as we did at both levels for – for sort of the middle part of the year, we were able to really get that kick mark sort of 
um, possession game going um, at both VFL and AFL level. And, uh, and and that led to our defenders having some some pretty big possession numbers, um, but we were, you know, that was sort of on our terms. We were controlling and playing our game style. Um, I, I wouldn't have said that was necessarily the case yesterday. I think it was more a bit of you know, there's a lot of footy coming in, and and Sam and Kane Baldwin and um, one or two others. Joel Fitzgerald, I thought had a terrific day. That uh, you know, a couple of those guys were able to stand up and find a fair bit of footy but um at the end of the day it was such a sort of flood of footy coming in that that Mm -hmm. um even though i think those guys including sam i think you know um played quite well himself but weight of numbers in the end just had that they they couldn't stop them all unfortunately and you mentioned another key defender there paul um kane the kane train baldwin one of our favorites here how did you see his game yeah, I thought he was one of our best. Um, I, I wouldn't say a lot of guys had great days yesterday. It was really one of those days where, where I wouldn't say a lot of our players had particularly good days. I thought um, out of the AFL guys, I thought Kane and probably Waller were our two best off the top of my head. I thought they both played quite well. I thought Waller's ball use was uh, exceptional and a real standout on a windy day at Windy Hill. Mm. Uh, and Kane, I thought, um, you know, was was pretty good ball in hand as well. For some reason, he's been he kept getting caught on his left side and and showing off how good a kick he is off his left foot yesterday. He kicked, probably had more kicks on his left than his right, I think, but was still effective with ball in hand and and held up pretty well defensively. So uh, I think he um, he played forward the week before as a sort of um, you know a team accommodation thing where he where he kind of forward to allow Sam Wiedemann to come in and, and go back. Um, they they both played back this week, and I think um, Kane's performance probably showed that he was pretty comfortable immediately heading back there. Um, on the defenders discussion, Paul, we haven't spoken about Lewis Hayes for probably a couple of months, if I'm being honest. Um, how's his year coming along? How's the development going? Um, there's you know obviously you know quite a few uh, a bit of competition for key defensive spots in the side at the moment with you know people moving back and forward. How do you see uh, Lewis's game at the moment? Oh, I really like him as a player. I think he's a, a really talented young player who reads the ball terrifically well um, and you know ha- has pretty good skills on both sides of his body, particularly for a, for a kid his size. But um, he has come in, you know, quite like he's without being sort of unkind about it. He's skinny, mm-hmm. you know, uh, like he, he's a, he's a a lightweight, skinny young guy. So um, you know, physically he's no doubt it, it will have been a bit of a shock to the system, I think, um, this year to him. And, and probably um, his development has been as much about that as anything else, as much about sort of, um, you know, getting used to the rigours of AFL footy and and um, and developing his body into one that, you know, because he's playing on guys who are 100 kilos plus a lot mm. of the time. And, um, you know, for, for an 18, 19-year-old kid um, who's, you know, probably about, 75 kilo ring and wet. Um, that's a big step up and one that, um, you know, one that he's, uh, I think he's actually done pretty well. You know, I think he's had some really good weeks. As with most first year players, I think they, um, you know, they tend to have their sort of, the, the form line looks a bit like a Tour de France map, you know, profile. They tend to be a bit um, up and down with peaks and valleys of form and He's probably had that as as well as most sort of first years guys do, but I think he's shown a lot in his first year. To be honest, to suggest that um, he can have a really good career as an AFL football. Very much looking like a uh, Dustin Fletcher two point oh at the moment with his physique. Much to uh, mu- much no, to no, not most many of guys our keys. Off, yeah, yeah, and yeah, not many guys have been able to carry that off for a career, but Fletcher certainly did. Yeah, well, he's hoping that the protege can can step up, right? Um, I should say, by the way, I reckon um, Hazy had probably um, almost his most possessions he's had in the game on the weekend. I think he found quite a lot of it and actually played really well. So, you know, you do expect those ups and downs a little with um, with the first year guys, particularly with the big first year guys. You know, the the bigger bodies tend to they take a bit longer to develop into them, but. You know, I think he's shown some terrific signs, and I thought he was um, pretty good on Sunday. 
And the big Stools was back. Great to uh, have Stools. him back in the team. Certainly yeah. feel like our, our AFL team could have really have had his, uh, uh, I guess, his uh, his presence this year. How did you see his, his first game back for the club? Oh, oh look, he was quiet. Um, you know, he didn't, didn't find a whole lot of footy. He was playing deep forward on a day when the footy didn't get deep forward that much. So, um, you know, probably a, a difficult role for him to – step back into after so long out of footy, but truthfully, it was just good to see him on the park. You know, it's been, I'm sure, an incredibly um, frustrating year for him on one hand and, and really difficult year um, on the other. You know, I know it's been public knowledge that, that Stu's lost his dad not long ago and um, you know, I'm sure that's been incredibly difficult for him and, and combined with just repeated injuries, just these little injuries that kept coming up for him where I remember in our I think our last pre-season game at the hangar he was kicking out footies with me before the game and he was a week or so away um, and here we are what 18 20 weeks later yeah. and he's just played his first game back so yeah. um, and it wasn't I don't think it was ever sort of one big thing I think he just kept having these these annoying sort of setbacks yeah um, with his body which I'm sure has been incredibly difficult for him so to see him there, um, you know, just really happy to be back with a big smile on. I think is um, that's a big win, and he he's a real pro. Stores he he looks after his body really well. He makes sure he turns up, you know, prepared to play footy, and um, I, you know he looked terrific. He looked in terrific shape yesterday, and uh, I'm sure he'll very quickly get back into the swing of things if he can just stay on the park. So. Um, yeah, I think it was a real positive him coming back, and um, you know, it can only be good for the next few weeks. And as you said, I, like he's he certainly could have been useful at times at AFL level this year as well. Speaking of, just one last point there on Stuz. If all goes well, he can put together a body of work in the preseason, get his body right. If he was to take strides to play in the AFL team, where would you prefer to see him play in in the back line or in the forward line? It's um, the Kyle Langford question, isn't it? Mm. <laughs> he's, uh, he, he's always been um, pretty flexible, Stuz. Uh, personally, I really like him as a back. I think he's a really strong body um, back who, who can, uh, um, unlike most young sort of key defenders, can really wrestle if they need to with a big body and um, show that strength. And I like his ball use down back as well. He's, he's, a, um, he's a good aggressive kick of the footy. Um, and good on both sides of his body. So I've always liked him back. But then he comes down to VFL level and plays forward and just absolutely monsters blokes and tosses them around like <laughs> ragdolls. So um, that I also enjoy seeing that. So I'll hedge my bets a little bit. But I I, I reckon personally I, I like him more as a back, but I do see the value of him with that big body and those hands forward, that's for sure. Uh, Essendon VFL are playing Southport this Saturday, 11.35 a.m. at Fankhauser Reserve, if I'm saying that correct. Uh, Paul, no, will you it. be on the bus and or plane <laughs> to the G- the GC, mate? Uh, the, my only chance is actually putting myself on a, you know, like a V-line bus or something. Right. So uh, it, it's a very, uh, very small uh, travel party. I don't quite squeeze into the... Uh, the budget, unfortunately, the president's rule isn't uh, isn't necessarily one that is vital on game day. Unlike mm. um, trainers and and coaches, and you know, of course, well, I don't know what these coaches are doing, thinking they're more important than me on game day, <laughs> but apparently they do. So um, they have to travel, and I get to watch it on my TV. Although um, I am sort of starting to suffer from a bit of FOMO, so. I wouldn't completely rule out a sort of last minute dot com booking. Oh, there you go. Well, if anyone does uh, see Paul on the flight, make sure you uh, give him a shout out and buy him a. Oh, uh, by all means, very please stick beer at the chew my ear off because I love that on a plate. <laughs> 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 Nothing better when I'm sitting down with some headphones on, listening to music, and someone starts chatting. I love that. Uh, well, I was about to say thank you very much for your time tonight, Paul. Very generous. <laughs> As always, and we always appreciate you coming on the show, and we'll speak to you next week. My great pleasure, boys. I like the dapper look. Let's see a bit more of this formal attire. 
Definitely. I'm, uh, I'm, di- I'm digging it. I won't recognize you next week when you turn up in your trackies. grapes, mullet, t shirts, and trackies again. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> definitely, definitely. Thanks, Paul. Thanks, Paul. Thanks, Paul. Cheers, Paul. My pleasure, boys. Talk soon. There we go, boys. The great man, Paul. Brilliant, as always. That's uh, it's the wake. That's the wake. It is the it's, wake. It's the wake. Yeah, come on. Yeah, All loosen right. the tie. Ties, 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 ties off. Oh, Does anyone have any durries? <laughs> yeah, I'm, seriously. I'm not as like I, I, I've usually had a dozen beers by the time it gets to the wake. Yeah, you know. Actually, I guess you don't drink day the funeral. This is the end of the wake. You're sitting there swapping stories. <laughs> when my old man stealing darts a off your yeah, yeah, that's when it's happening. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. It's when I've I have two cousins who are renowned for being the two most drunk people at a any family occasion. I always say that they are, they're Barcelona and Real Madrid. Every year it's one of them. You just don't know which one it's going to be. And whether it's Christmas or a funeral or something, one of those two is going to be so belligerent someone has to take them home. We just don't know who it's going to be each time. So, um, yeah, that's where my head's always at. I'm like, who's it going to be? Gonna, oh, she's having a few extra champagnes. Oh, no, she's having a few extra champagnes. Who's it going to be? I don't know. I don't know. So... Yeah, could go a stiff drink though. It is the last day of July, and I've been doing dry July, so I feel like I've earned one. Absolutely, I feel like I've earned a whiskey. Maybe sit down and watch, watch the Ashes or watch or the just Matildas. Get yeah, yeah, we're two down now, which is great. But the Tillies are two up, so that's calm before We can't have it all. Mm. We can't have it all. Uh, Jesse, final thoughts from you before we go home. Uh, would love to see someone just probably t- Steve Smith just absolutely smashing a ball into Chris Woke's hands. Mm. Because I hate that bloke. He just <laughs> shits me up the wall more than anyone. Yep. Not for any other reason. He's just a good cricketer yep. and he seems to love tearing us up. As far as the season goes, it's still alive. There's still a glimmer of hope. We're not dead and buried just yet. So, you know, let's just take it week by week at this point in time, see where it takes us. Jolly, final words. Yeah, be lovely to see a win uh, post year and all just to kind of bring the spirits back up. Um, so yeah, let's see how we go on Matt. the weekend. Yeah, I'd love to um see Stuart Broad get injured myself. <laughs> yeah, there's a few English there's you'd few. love to see heaps of them. There's yeah. there's quite a few. The full English, the full English. To be honest, the full mm. English. Best. Is it not squad. the? Is this Winging not the problems. biggest? Would like there's so much morally riding on us winning this just because of how much of a whiny bunch of pricks they've been Ooh, over yeah. this series. Shocking. Like yeah. if they win, I don't think I f- I'll feel more. Deflated, uh, taking ashes back home. A win, this. a win, a, like an outright win is the ultimate. Yeah, S- sit down. Yeah, S- sit down, mate. Yeah, we've yeah. got it from you. sit down. You know. <laughs> yeah, correct. Steve Smith just on mic. Sit down to the whole of the Oval. Just that's all I want to hear. So mm. that'd be nice. That'd be nice. Maybe it, even Cummings hitting the winning runs would be pretty, pretty good because he's be nice. he's copped it. He's yeah. copped it. He has absolutely copped it. Yes. Um, and Piers Morgan's a cockhead, so we can leave it at that. Um, thank you, everyone, for listening. Uh, appreciate everyone who supports the program. If you want to listen to Thursday's show, you can start to become a premium member on our website. Five bucks a month, forty-two for the year. Get bonus content all through the season and stuff in the off season as well. It's getting time for me to text uh, our dear friend Cal to come in for the. The trade chat. We're getting close. Yeah, we're getting real close. I want to know a, a phantom phantom guide. I'm 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 ready for a couple. I want to know. Um, what else? Uh, thanks to our sponsors. Thanks to Ticket Blaster. Thanks to everybody. Really. Thanks to all the creeps on YouTube. Hello to you. And yeah, go Dons. Go planes. Go planes.